Good morning. Merry Christmas to you once again, and so glad that you're here with us this morning. If you have a copy of God's Word, I would love for you to turn with me to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. As you're turning there, <coughs> as some of you were in attendance Wednesday night at our live nativity scene, I will tell you that it was scheduled and a lot of work went into having a donkey present at the nativity scene, a real, a real donkey. And near, as we got closer to the time of the live nativity scene, it, it just didn't work out. And that's okay. I don't believe anybody left Wednesday night that was in attendance and, thought, and said, I sure wish they'd have had a donkey. <laughs> you may have, but I don't believe so. A couple of the... I believe one of the shepherds and maybe one of the wise men. It didn't work out. One was traveling. One got sick. And we were able to get somebody to fill in. And even if we hadn't had anybody to fill in, I don't really believe anybody would have left and said, I wonder why they just had one or two shepherds. And honest and truthfully, we don't know the number of wise men that came. Typically, there's three. I don't believe anybody would have left and said, I wonder why, and we did have three, and I wonder why they only had one or two kings. But I do believe if we hadn't had Mary that night, if Joseph would have walked in down the field and arrived at the manger, and Mary never walked with him or behind him or beside him, Joseph would have sat in that nativity scene right by himself that entire night here on this property. Somebody might would have left and said, did they forget Mary? That got me to kind of thinking. I titled our time this morning, Mary, what if you'd have said no? Can y'all feel the weight of that question for just a moment? Now, it may be hard to because everybody in this room and everybody listening, we all know Mary said yes. But what if she'd have said no? And what's kind of weird about the message that God has laid on my heart this morning, it's not about Mary's possibly saying no. But I believe that title gets us to where we need to be this morning. As we look at Mary saying yes. But I can't help but wonder, Miss Fay. I wonder if she ever had wished Gabriel hadn't come to her. I can't help but wonder if she ever wondered and thought, I kind of wish Joseph wouldn't have been so understanding and patient, even though he wasn't at first. But we'll really never know what she marveled in her heart that night when Christ was born. And up until the point of the pregnancy announcement, the nine months, and then the birth of the Lord. I wonder if she ever wished that things had just been different. <clears throat> I want to set the scene of it. We're only looking at two verses this morning. And I want to set the scene up to you. It was a normal day in Nazareth until Gabriel got dispatched. Mary was doing what she was typically doing, and it is believed she was around maybe 14 or 15 years old at this time. Now, 
the, the, the engagement had already happened between her and Joseph. And, and that was going on. And, and Gabriel arrives on the scene, probably in her home. Now think about that for just a moment. You're home vacuuming, or some of you probably got your Roomba going around doing it for you. You may be washing dishes. And an angel shows up at your house. And just his presence. But not only his presence, but what he presents. And he looks at Mary and he says, Rejoice, highly favored one. Now don't miss this. He says, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you. Don't miss this. Blessed are you among women. Well, that scared her to death as we talked about Wednesday night of that fear. And then Gabriel says, don't, don't be afraid. She didn't understand. She knew how. What was announced to her. Stay with me a second. She knew how, but she didn't know how. And he says, do not be afraid. And then I love this. Gabriel says, do you remember your cousin Elizabeth? How she was buried? And she's with child. Now look at verse 37. Look at verse 37. For with God, nothing will be impossible. And then Mary said, verse 38, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Brother Charlie Emmy, would you ask for God's blessings, please? <clears throat> Amen. Thank you. As we look at these two verses this morning, I want to share with you rather quickly three major mindsets of Mary. And as we look at each mindset of Mary and these words that she said, I want to ask you this morning, and I want to challenge you this morning, when the Holy Spirit moves in your life, maybe you're here this morning, and you do not have a relationship with Christ, and, and maybe you know you need that this morning. There's a desire, there's a yearning, and there's a calling upon your life this morning that you need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You need to be born again. You need to be saved and seek forgiveness of your sins. What is your mindset this morning? Uh, church, maybe you're here this morning and you do have a relationship with Christ. What is your mindset now this morning? What will be your mindset maybe tomorrow when the Holy Spirit moves in your life and desires you to dig deeper, maybe in the Word of God, maybe to give that hand out, maybe to move that foot or open that mouth in obedience to the will of God? What is our mindset this morning as we sit here in this sanctuary of Soldier Bay Baptist Church? Do we say yes to the Lord the way we should? The first major mindset is simply that Mary trusted God's way. Mary trusted God's way. Look at verse 38. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Think about that statement for just a moment. She immediately identified herself. While Gabriel is there present, he hasn't left yet, in the, in the presence of the messenger from God Almighty, 
she identifies herself as a maidservant to the Lord. What does that mean? That simply means she is saying, I am identifying myself in this command with this decree that has come from above. I'm identifying myself as a slave to God Almighty. In other words, when you're a slave, when you're a maidservant, there's not but only one person that you receive orders from, and it's always the master. It's the master here that is speaking to Mary. Do not downplay her obedience, sir and ma'am, this morning. Don't set aside Mary's obedience in this statement by saying, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord. Watch, she, watch this now. I, I think I need to rattle your cage for just a moment. What she was agreeing to, she knew was going to possibly put her to death. It could have possibly put her to death. Now we know this, we realize this, because this isn't the first time we've heard or looked at Mary and the Christmas story of all our life being a believer. But having child and not being married, that sentence could have been her being stoned to death. Now, let's pause just for a moment. Did it happen a lot biblically, in biblical times? No, it did not. It did not happen a lot, but it was still dangling out there that it could happen. And what's interesting about all of this this morning, for some reason, what is really interesting to me about this is that, watch this now, with Mary saying, I'm going to do what the Lord says. I'm going to do what God says. By doing that, don't, don't, don't get deep theology here with me and say, I've got it all wrong, but just listen to these words for just a second. When she said yes to God, she was immediately identifying herself as a sinner right there. She was. And what's interesting is Elizabeth, her cousin that we're going to look at in just a second, her, her barrenness brought disgrace to her. Because as a woman in biblical time, if you could not have a child, you weren't any good. You couldn't help out with the lineage. You couldn't help out with the legacy. So here Elizabeth is, prior to her pregnancy, is, in that, is, in, is dealing with all of that disgrace, but yet her Pregnancy brought grace. At the moment of Elizabeth's pregnancy, it lifted the disgrace that she was going through. But yet at the moment of Mary's, this position that she's in, that she's lived the life, she's lived the righteous life, she fears God, she's done what she's supposed to as a, as a, as a, a great day in the morning. Um, as a fiancé, she's done what she was supposed to as a fiancé, but yet she's now moved herself from that of grace to that of disgrace. By being obedient to the Lord. By being obedient to this command. And right after she says this, we have to appreciate Dr. Luke because he always tells us when the angels go back to heaven. Now, I kind of like to think, if I get you laughing, maybe I'll get you listening because I don't know if you're breathing. I think when Gabriel got back to heaven, he was glad that she had said yes. Just in my little bit of imagination, work with me for just a second. God said, Gabriel, how'd it go? She said yes. <laughs> Can y'all... She said yes. I know some of y'all that have argued with Gabriel. I'm not going to call any names, Rhonda. But anyway, uh, I know some of you that ju you just want to guide it. But Gabriel goes back to heaven because his job is done. And Luke always tells us this. Well, when, ain't, when, when Gabriel goes to heaven, Mary runs to Elizabeth. And when she arrives at Elizabeth's house, we have two affirmations and we have one manifestation. The very first thing that we see, look at verse 40. And entered and Mary arose in uh, 39, and Mary rose in the days and went to the hill country with haste. That means she got there to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened. <clears throat> and it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb. 
we have affirmation number one. See, Mary goes to the house, and just kind of like we do today, is anybody home? Because the Bible says when Elizabeth heard her greeting, she opened the door, she said, Elizabeth, let me tell you what happened. John the Baptist broke Elizabeth's rib. Mom, has you ever felt your baby kick? You ain't never felt one kick like this. The affirmation, the presence of the Lord. And then we have the manifestation. What do you mean, Jason? Look at verse. Look at the verse. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that the babe leaped in her womb. Now don't miss this. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Y'all, where had she just heard those words? Will you please talk to me? Where had she just heard those words? Those exact same words? Gabriel. Was Elizabeth there when Gabriel spoke those words? Elizabeth was only able to speak words from heaven because she was filled with the Holy Spirit from heaven. Amen. Sir, man, when you're speaking to individuals, when you're speaking to individuals, and you want to get out there and, and give them a guidance and give them advice, pray. Pray. And ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit before you speak. She speaks from heaven here. This is the manifestation, that feeling of the presence of God in that home and of the Son of God in that home is the manifestation of God in that home. And the affirmation number two was the exact same words that Elizabeth spoke. Mary at this point, sir, ma'am, was highly favored. But it's an earthly highly favor. It's not that of an eternal highly favor she is not still to be worshipped. She was not highly favored because how she carried herself. She was highly favored because of whom she carried. And she's there. Can I give you life application? God may ask you to do something. Mr. Sonny, I got to thinking about it, especially this week. God may ask us to do something. If you're listening, say, I am. Look, when God asks you to do something, watch me now. He is only asking you to do what He asks you to do. He is not asking you to figure out what He's asking you to do. Can I say that again? When God asks you to do something, he is only asking you to do what He asks you to do. He is not asking you to figure out what He's asking you to do. That is an original thought and I love them. I wish somebody tweeted that. This past week, we, uh, I don't even remember what day it was. Thursday maybe? Uh, Soldier Bay and Sunset Beach PD, uh, we were able to give out 86 Christmas dinners right here in our parking lot. The food and the meals that was left over, uh, we carried to the Lord's Food Pantry at Camp Methodist, and they'll continue to minister to those there. And there was this guy that came up, and I could tell when he came up, he didn't know why he was here. But I talked with him a little bit, and we, we gave him a meal. Now listen to me closely. I said, well, did you get a call? He said, no, my wife did. I said, well, what's your wife's name? And his wife's name or number was nowhere on our list. Nowhere. And I called him by name. I says, well, we'd just love to love on you and give you a meal. Here's the turkey. Here's the sides. Merry Christmas. God loves you. He drove on. That night, I think it was around 8 o'clock, my phone rang at home. My home number rang. 
which means they don't know me. Rhonda looks at the caller ID and she says, this has got to be for you. I don't know who this is. And I said, hello? Because that's what we do. <laughs> he said, Jason. He said, I, I had to call you. He said, me and my wife, we did not need that Christmas meal. And I don't know who called or why they called. I said, well, I don't either because you're not on our list. He said, but we cared to a family that didn't have nothing. Let me tell you something. When God asks you to do something, He's not asking you to figure it out. He's just asking you to do something. Trust His way. Trust His way. Because when you're trying to figure out God, when, you're trying, when I'm trying to figure out God, watch this now, when we're trying to figure out God, everything we're basing that on is our security. When you're trusting God, all your weight is on His sovereignty. Trust His way. Second major mindset I want you to see real quick is Mary trusted God's Word. She said, let it be according to your word. Do you trust God's word this morning? Do you trust the word that's in, in your lap this morning? Do you trust that word that you hear when you're praying and you're having your quiet time? Do you trust God's word this morning? Well, did it come from God? Absolutely, it came from God's messenger, Gabriel. That's Gabriel's word. Who do you think sent Gabriel? God sent Gabriel. And this young Jewish girl, watch this now, don't miss this. This young Jewish girl, it wasn't that she went to vacation Bible school every other year. This young Jewish girl knew Scripture. This young Jewish girl had to know Scripture. She had to know Scripture. And one thing that's interesting is that Mary did not have the Gospel of Luke. But I want you to look at the very first few verses of Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 1, Luke says, Inasmuch as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and minister of the word delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write to you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. What Luke is saying here to Theophilus, and we don't really know who Theophilus is. It is believed he was a high priest in Jerusalem. It is also believed he was a government official. But either way, whoever Theophilus is, I thank God that Luke wrote to him. And what Luke is saying to him, everything that is written in here is the truth. Because we have seen it. We, have, we can trust God's word. And Mary trusted God's word. How do you know that, Jason? Look at verse 54. He has helped. This is Mary's Magnificent. Her song. This is how we know she knew His word. He has helped His servant Israel in remembrance of His mercy as He spoke to our fathers. Somebody say amen right there. As He spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his seed forever. Josh McNow, the Christian apologist, says if you take ten authors from the same walks of life, the same time period, the same country, the same language, and ask them to expound on one basic subject, would such a conglomeration all agree? Absolutely not. But when you think about the Word of God this morning, from the uh, as, as Pastor Zach said Friday night at Christmas Eve, when you think about the Word of God this morning, from Genesis to Revelation, there is one woven theme in the fabric of God's Word. And that is, sir and ma'am, that every human being is a sinner in need of a Savior. And His name is Jesus. 
Think about the 66 authors. Think about, excuse me, the 66 books, the 40 authors, the three different languages, the three different continents that this book was written on. Think about the authors. They were prophets. They were priests. They were farmers. They were, they were doctors. They were preachers. They were shepherds. They were fishermen. All of that comes together and it's all woven together of that one thing. And you can trust God's word. And Mary, by saying he has helped his servant Israel, Everything God has said, everything God has said is coming true. You know what Mary knew? If you're listening, say I am. She knew the theme of the Bible. Thirdly, not only did she trust God's way, not only did she trust God's word, Mary trusted God's work. Look at verse 49. For he who is mighty has done great things. Say it with me. For me. And holy is his name. She trusted God's work. Who else? Who else could have prepared Gabriel? Who else could have prepared Herod? Who else could have prepared Caesar Augustus? Who else could have prepared the shepherds being in the field watching their flocks by night? Who else could have prepared Joseph? Who else could have prepared Mary? Only God Almighty. Mary trusted His work. Mary was the only one. Let me go and do something. Musicians, will you come? Mary was the only one present at the first breath of Jesus and the last breath of Jesus. Did y'all hear what I said? The first breath. The last breath. She was at the cross. And one thing that's interesting, I still got another 30 minutes, I just want them playing. One thing that's interesting is when Jesus looked at John, and you know the scripture, he looked at John, he said, behold your mother, behold your son. And the Bible says, from that hour, watch out, I'm dangerous. From that hour, John carried her home. And then the very next verse says, Jesus gave up the ghost. I think she was present at his death. And mama, can I ask you something? Could you have just sat there and watched and not said a word? I just want to grab your attention. God looked at Jesus one day. He says, you're going to earth. Jesus said, I know. He says, you're going to be born in cloth and a trough. Jesus said, I'll do it. God says, people aren't going to like you. Jesus said, I'll do it. He said, the devil's going to hate you. Jesus said, it'll be all right. God says, the church is not going to like you. Jesus said, it'll be all right. God says, you're going to get beat. Jesus said, it'll be all right. 
God says you're going to get spit on. Jesus said it'll be all right. God said they're going to put a crown of thorns on your head. Jesus said, okay. God says you're going to die on a cross. Jesus said, I'll do it. Because Mary said yes. Well, Jason, that's Mary. No. That's you too. Because we're to carry Jesus. And we're to allow Him to grow and mature in us. So others may see Him. I don't know what you've said up to this point. But maybe it's been no. But everything Jesus done for you and for me, He said it'll be all right. I'll do it. Can you say those words back to Him this morning? Can you say yes? Don't know what you're dealing with. Don't know what you're going through. But this morning, will you come, if you're so late, and say yes to Jesus? Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, do only what you can do at this time. Even now, as the congregation stands all over, Father, I pray for this sanctuary, for our lives, to be filled with your Spirit this morning. If there's one here that doesn't know you, Savior and Lord, Father, I pray that you give them the boldness, the courage, just to come this morning and say yes to you. God, I love you. Thank you for loving us. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Everybody say it. Amen. Good morning. Thank you so much for being with us this morning with our online services here at Soldier Bay. We were so, we're so glad that you joined us. Here on the screen, you see our email address and our phone number to the church office. Is God dealing with you about something this morning? We would love to pray with you. We would love to speak to you. If we can help you during this time of a prayer concern or, or maybe it's your relationship with the Lord. Maybe it's your walk. Whatever your spiritual need is this morning, please feel free to reach out to us. As always, God is good all the time. Thank you. God bless.